Kia ora everyone, how you doing? It's Om here from Craft Lab NZ and as you can see I'm in the beautiful Ngahiri. Right now we're down central North Island so I've taken a little break to show everyone how to try to make these most amazing harakiki little sun visors. So I'm going to show you the equipment that we need and then we're going to get started. Okay, so I'm going to show you the tools that I use to be able to make this happen. So I've got a butter knife. Now I use this for two things. First thing I use this for is I use this on the dull side of the flax I use the butter knife to be able to drag this flax blade over to be able to really soften that. So that's one use. Another use is it's actually a really good size guide for how wide the flax needs to be. So today what we're going to do for adults, we need 12 pieces about as wide as a butter knife. If we're making one for kids, we probably only need 10. So this is a great size guide for us today. So come on in, I'll show you the rest of the tools that we're going to use. Now what I have here is I've got a little shredder. Now this could be an old saw blade, this could be a dog comb or even a knit comb. Later on this will come in handy for me to quickly shred and separate those fibres so I can plait it so it can make that beautiful plait at the end of the flax. Yes I've got a pair of scissors and maybe three pegs that might come in handy. So I'm going to show you the first step and then we're just going to get into it. Alrighty, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our first piece. So round about halfway through this flax leaf, I'm just going to bend it like so, so it makes a big old V. Okay, so we can see that there, I've got a big old V hanging out there. The next piece is going to get basically just laid on top. So that V is sitting like so, this piece is going to go directly on top, and again that V is going to get folded up right beside that next one. So I've got two sitting on top of each other. The third one, before I put the third one on, see this little one here that's trapped under? If I fold this back like so, I get my next one that's gonna lay on top, roughly looking at halfway, I can drop this back down to lock it in place. Now I can fold this up. So now I've got my third V pointing up. What I'll see now is always, at least for the next few moves, this first one here needs to come up. So I'm going to pull that one up like so. Before I move it, get my next piece, drop that on top, round about halfway, drop that down to be able to lock it in place. See how I'm pulling this down or pushing it away to get that V so it's roughly central? Awesome, looking really good. So I've got four in place now. This is probably a great time where one of my pegs are going to come in handy to put right at the beginning, just to hold those first few in place. So at this point here, now I've got one, two, three, four. Each time I add one, I'm gonna have another piece. So for now, I'm gonna lift up piece number two and piece number four, because those are the, both the ones that are under. I'm gonna lay another piece on top like so. Then I'm gonna drop that down, again, making sure that V is central. Fold this up, now I've got five pieces. And following that same pattern of the second and fourth going up, laying this pattern on like so, dropping that down to lock it, getting that V central and pushing it up like so. You'll see now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So what I can actually do is I can do the second, the fourth and the sixth piece can all come under. So basically as many of those pieces that are under that can come up and lock that into place, the better. So the next clip you'll see this all together nice and tight. Okay so what you'll see here is I've now got my awesome little pattern and I've got my nice little triangle let's say. Along the way I ended up putting a piece up here to contain it and also out to the side. So the next step is deciding where I'm going to start finishing this off. Now a good indication is I can basically use the measurement of my fingers so if I was to put my finger up here to hold it at the top at the peak pretty much the, the span of my fingers, so somewhere along this line here is where I'd need to finish my flax off. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do something called a single lock off. Now if you haven't tried this, it's a really awesome way to extend your, your capability or your, your ways to be able to put, um, do different finishings for your flax. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of roughly get that guide of, okay, across my fingers here. So I'm actually going to back this off a little bit. So with a single lock off, the way that that works is I bring a piece back, okay, and then I grab a piece that's going up here, and I actually fold that back like so, 
and then as, as I drop that down, that actually physically locks that piece off, which is pretty awesome. So the next piece is this one here beside it. So I'd fold this one back here. This gets folded back. This piece up here would get folded down. And again, it gets locked off like so. Finishing with this last piece here, this next one beside it here. So it's the second one down. This one comes back. We can see that we've got one piece going over. We want it to go over actually, not only this one, but this one. So this one can pop up here like so. And then that piece here will get pulled and folded down. And as I drop that back, that actually locks it off. So you can see I've got one, two, three locked off across the top now. What we're gonna do is now we're gonna concentrate on the side bit. So you can see this piece here, any piece that's going on top, so that one's on top, that one and that one, this one can come back towards me. The next piece that's next to it, which is this one here, that can actually get folded back. And as I drop that down, that's what locks it off. So this piece here can get folded back. That piece under there can get folded back. And again, dropping that piece down actually locks it off. And to finish this side, this piece here comes back, that piece there comes back there, and then that drops down to lock it. So what I've done now is I've gone through and I've locked all of these ones off. I'll finish off by locking this side off here, and then we'll show you the next step. So what I've done, you can sort of see here, I've locked these three off, also locked that, that, and that. So all these ones that have been locked off here, they, you can sort of see they're only under one at the moment. So what I'm going to do with all of them is I'm just going to get the ends of these little pieces here, and I'm going to put them back and put them under two. So I want every single one of them to not only be locked under one, but if you have a little look here, I want that to go through here. And I pull that down, so now that's locked under two pieces. So I want to go through all of these ones that I've initially locked off and do that. And then what I want to do is I want to flip it over the other side and finish the other side off. So the next step will be me flipping it once I've locked these all off and just put them somewhere. I suppose that's the thing about this. There's no real rules to how this goes. It's a real experimental thing. But what I've discovered is the more places that you can put it, the more lock-offs you can do and slide it under, the stronger it's going to be, and then when you bend it, it won't fall apart. So we'll show you that next step. Alrighty, so now what I've done is I've finished off all that bottom side and I've flipped it over. So what you can see here is all these ones are kind of finishing under. So all I'm going to do is I've taken the scissors and I've gone through and given all the tops of them a little snip. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this back Wherever this came from, I'm going to fold it back and I just want to try and slide it under at least a couple. So you can see here, if I can slide that back, I can get that coming under one here. A little bit of a wiggle sometimes to get it through. Awesome. So that's finished through one, but again, I definitely always want to go through at least two pieces choice there so that's locked off through two again this next one here gets folded back and again just trying to fold it under a couple of pieces so all this ends up finished off once I have slid it through and it's gone through a couple like this one going under one and two all I can do here is come through snip that off to clean it up and alrighty so you can see now that I've finished this off and I've basically sort of got three pieces each side left so this is where that little tool that's going to shred it um, shred these fibers going to totally come in handy so if I basically hold these fibers here and I pull that like so along this tool um, I can shred all those fibers up they don't need to be super super fine and again you can use a knit comb for this you can use um, an old saw blade or even a dog comb I know people use so I'm just giving this a bit of a a bit of a split up each side so once I've separated those fibres and shred them all, now it's quite a simple process of basically just doing a three-ply plait to bring them all together, to bring them all the way up to the top. So real simple plait like so, all the way to the top. And then we'll show you how to do that both sides and we'll finish those off. 
So once I've done my plait here, to finish it off, all I'm going to do is I'm going to find one of these long pieces that's left here, and I'm just going to wrap that around there a few times. And all that will do is that'll just sort of stop it from unwinding for a while, leave my finger in the way, put that little bit through there. So I've sort of a little half hitch there, a little knot, just to kind of hold that in place. All right, so the last step, let's have a look up here. Okay, so the last step is I've got my little hat here. Now, at the moment, it doesn't look like a hat, but it needs to be shaped. And for probably the next few days, it's going to end up sort of bending it and tweaking it so it's going to turn into a hat. But the initial step is going to be tying it around your head like so, and then at the back, just getting the right size for what you want. So for me, I'm going to do a nice little clove, a little half hitch there. Okay, so once I've got this on here, now it is just purely the process of me bending that peak up. Anyway, from Omicraft Lab NZ, Merry Christmas. Hope you enjoy your awesome hat.